Yeah, definitely. We're seeing a bit of poke comp, uh, poke comp, poke competition in this bot lane, uh, mid lane, sorry. Uh, and even bot lane's doing quite well to poke each other, you know, get it, get at each other, get into each other's. Hang on, lane. back up here in this top lane, it's all going down. And uh, there's a Destin that's actually in the bot lane as well. Angsty finds out on towards Human Man. Resolve is quite low. And Vladimir is trying to do some damage on towards him. Angsty dives again back in on towards the Human Man. The Human Man is forced to flash over that wall. And that engage heavily in favor right there of the guys on T-Storm. Yeah, T-Storm did really well to counter gank that. Uh, I don't think they expected uh, Wukong to really turn up at that one. Uh, and he's rotating back towards his wall, so... Oh, Maybe the flash really forced out actually in bot lane as well from on towards Willer's demand because he's Ooh. taking so much damage from Valkyrie. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Valkyrie's doing really well to just completely zone the. Oh, out. there it is, Dark um, Binding, and now the damage comes back through, but it's poked back on towards Lapras. Sorry, uh, you were saying there again. Boogie. Yeah, no, Valkyrie's doing a really good job in poking out Willer's demand and just zoning them out, uh, tr stopping them from trying to get the, the uh, Dark Binding out uh, and tormented soil. So. I feel like Valkyrie's doing really well in this threshold. It definitely shows how much of a strong lane presence Valkyrie is. Uh, Valkyrie has on Thresh, and just as Thresh as a whole. I've actually played with Valkyrie before, and yeah, he was he was going on about how to be aggressive and pressure in that lane. So certainly something we're looking to see. Now it's just kind of back and forth, and we did see that couple of sets of players. Junglers are now back on their own respective sides, so we did see Skyler return to his blue side jungle and Wukong back towards his purple side jungle. And a hook comes out actually under Willow's demand, but the black shield very well timed. Bot lane stops Poe coming through. But yeah, that was that uh, counter towards the main uh, main meta supports that I was talking about before, where it's Thresh and Leona. Morgana is very strong counter to both of these. Uh, and, oh, Dark Binding over the wall actually landing on Nada, so... Mm, they're gonna definitely something there. Disengage again in towards that bot lane. Wukong has actually gone base already, but uh, here comes Skarner in on towards this bot lane. Yeah, they knew he was coming, they had that ward there. Uh, and he's popped his uh, W, so... Gives him movement speed uh, and E, so... Definitely was looking to get a gank off in there. Oh, there's Flay going down. Some more damage. Uh, back and forth, and, and no real aggression at the moment. It's just just a farming game, really. Yeah, th these teams, uh, team compositions are quite reliant on farm uh, because a lot of them are quite item dependent. Obviously, Vladimir needs to get uh, Gunblade or um, Ancient Tome uh, to really do well, and they obviously need Spirit Visage as well to really up his heal potential. Uh, and it's same as mid lane, Akali and Dragus just quite reliant on hitting their level 6s, uh, and even bot lane, like, on the hunt is really needed for Lapras to really get into some good chases, but equally Nana needs to call for both clear waves and do some uh, nice executions if he can onto the opposing bot lane. Now, suddenly we find Sir uh, Angsty is coming down into this bot lane, he's looking for that gank, he is only level 4. He's found his way into this tri brush. Nope, he's gonna back out. There is no ward coverage, so they don't actually know that he's down here. Here he comes. Oh, the decoy! And Nada actually went in the wrong direction directly towards him, pops the barrier, and now they're in a little bit of a trouble. Another ricochet would kill Nada, but a flash and barrier burn is enough for the guys on T-Storm. Yeah, no, that's definitely worth it. Um, a lot of people say that no kill in a gank is not worth it, but if you can burn summoners, uh, especially quite lengthy summoner times, like Flash or Barrier, it is definitely a win for you, because it means you can make another gank blade. Oh, Dark Binding and the Boomerang Blade as well. Nice bit of damage on towards Thresh. They're going to look to back off. No, they're going to clear another wave before they go base. I feel like we could see a gank in mid lane, though. I don't think it's going to be pulled for much, though, because uh, Human Man is only level 4 in that Skana, whereas Eddie is definitely oh. level 6, so... The Kali's yeah. a long way behind as well on that health trade. So, the explosive cars could come out, but uh, they end up just backing off. There's a huge push on this bot lane. They reckon they might be able to get it. Lucian has now returned to this lane. Oh, doesn't quite pick up that CS, but uh, he's stopped that turret being quite pushed right now. But Siva doesn't care. She wants another wave. I think we're going to see some action in mid lane, though. Eddie and Resolve are looking to rotate in this mid lane. Here we go. Human Man comes down, as well as Resolve from that top lane. They're looking for this Eddie. Can they pick him up? He is quite low on mana, and now he's low on health as well, and they pick up the first blood. Akali to take the one away, and that is huge for Akali. She's going to start that snowball early. Yeah, no, she did only have boots to start off with, and she burnt through health. Uh, burnt through all her health pots, so that definitely showed that she 
took a very passive start, but it does mean that, you know, that first kill is really going to put her into a good position. Uh, and we're actually seeing a bit of counter jungling from the human man, so we could see a bit of a trade in terms of that. Oh, but... angsty! Manages to smite, steal that one away. Human man did actually try and get up in the jungle from angsty and take it away, but a nice smite came out and uh, it's back in the opposite direction. Uh, but he wasn't able to clear it out, so he does, does mean he has to go back, uh, heal up, and then clear it out. So we won't get another buff timer on that for another five minutes Absolutely. after he clears it up, so definitely yeah, looking towards that. Uh, Lapras, very low, hasn't been able to base, they overstayed in that bot lane and they've been shoving it for a long time and that means that the first dragon will probably go to their opponents. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel like they could potentially, or Lapras potentially couldn't stay into that one, but Willis Demand could definitely uh, at least try to keep them off of that power. Uh, I don't even think they're actually going to really, oh no, not only he's going to go for it, he was looking to back, but they're definitely going to stay for this one. Quickly, uh, T-Storm quickly making their way down towards his bot lane. Absolutely. Now he's clearing out a heap of creeps, trying to keep him up against that turret. Make sure the turret eats all the creeps up. They're going to base, now that has no mana bar, but here comes Human Man in the top lane. He's trying to get in there. The Impale will be alive. He does have six, but he's not going to get the Aetherus decides to just pop that ghost. Yeah, so, so far we've only seen one effective gank out of Skana, uh, and that was with Trundle. Hang on, Inksty comes into the mid lane, there's the Cyclone, Explosive Cast misses because there's a great flash from Warnox, he tries to turn it back around on towards Wukong, gets on towards him, he's now in that stealth bubble, he's trying to do as much as he can, Angsty's gonna go down because another camera hits on towards AM, and now Eddie is the focus, they do get the Impale, and they get a double kill onto Warnox, he is now 3-0, and oh, and all kills on the map going to him. So I'm just going to eat my words about now. Uh, pre-6, Skana doesn't have very strong ganks. Post-6, his ganks are very strong. Uh, and it looks like we're going to see this plot lane fall in T-Storm favor. Morgana Mo Actually, away. here it is. Thumbs out the Soul Shackles, and there it is. Also, the On the Hunt. They do manage to get the Dark Passage, but still stun up both of them. Nada's in trouble trying to tank up that, obviously, the, the culling as well. But uh, they managed to pick up Lapras on the return, and now the focus is on towards Willis Demand. They've gone a little bit too deep. He will eventually go down here. Akali is in this bot lane as well. And uh, are they going to donate? They're going to try and donate this one over to Akali. She's incoming. But uh, they'll have to eventually time it out because she was going to execute and they needed to get the kill before the, the uh, assists timed out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what? But they definitely overstayed in that bot lane after, that, after taking that turret. They should have just backed out of it and gone ahead for uh, just backing out of it. But, you know, this does mean that hum uh, AGL will get the first ba uh, not the Baron, Dragon of the game. Well, they're certainly starting it up. Right now, Silver's on the way. There is no on the hunt, and there will be no Soul Shackles either to come out from Morgana, but Storm Eddie is looking to come in and poke that one out. Trying to leave to the bottom side is now AGL. They do have, obviously, that... Oh, but never mind, the Boomerang Blade picks up Akali. They do have Lucian, sorry, I was trying to say, on the top side of it. So Valkyrie now gets dived on once again by Sir Angsty. They're looking to pick him up. Gragas gets another barrel, flashes out. Does Valkyrie, can he get out of this one? Angsty's looking at him, says nope, because Morgana, I believe, is clearing out wards in that bit. Yeah, Morgana's doing her work as a support, clearing out the wards. And I definitely feel like we're going to see uh, First Dragon actually no longer fall to AGL, but fall to uh, T-Storm. Really well worked by this. We could see a death sentence over the wall to pick up uh, Dragon. So, try. Pulls it out of the pit, and then that's just way too far out of range. They're a little bit slow on that one. They won't pick it up. They do manage to pick up Dragon for T Storm, and now they manage to back away with a 1k gold lead sitting in their pockets. Yeah, 1k gold leads, not much at the moment. But at first, it starts off as 1k, then it's 2k, then it's 3k, and it, it scales. Uh, out as the game goes on, if T-Storm can stay ahead. And when T-Storm do get ahead, they do stay ahead quite well. Uh, and I feel like that's a, a commendation to... Oh, but hang on, Warnox is going deep on towards Lapras. Can they pick him up? He's got the spell immune. There is the back shield. Finally times out on the hunt. Comes down as well. Explosive cast. Get rid of that one. But Aetheris is in trouble from Resolve in the top lane as well. Can they pick him up? The Ignite finally times out up there. And there will be no kills in either section of the map. Yeah, no, team fights all around, but no kills to anyone. Uh, Lucian actually looking to shove up this bot lane. Uh, Steve is looking to go answer him. Oh, Dark field. Finding finds on towards Warnox in the mid lane. They do get another barrel roll out to pick up damage on towards him. Box came out to protect Warnox, obviously, from Valkyrie. And uh, they get out of there once again. But that was, that was risky. That Dark Binding certainly hit the target it needed to. 
Yeah, Dark Binding definitely hit who it needed to, but they couldn't pick up anything from it. Uh, and Sivu was able to stop Lucian from shoving in that bot lane, picking up that tower. Uh, and it does mean T-Storm are going to turn around and take in this mid lane. Uh, Lucian's not going to be able to do anything. Never mind, there's a gank going down the top lane. That Impale comes out as well. There will be no subjugate to come out from Trundle. Trundle is trying to finally pick up that Vladimir. It does hit him with that Ice Club to pick him up. And, yeah, uh, completely flattened him under that uh, Ice Club. There wasn't any pull for him to get away with. Uh, and he did burn Ghost in that engage as well. And now the three men roaming towards this top lane. Resolve is pretty low on that mana side of things. He could be in trouble man as well and now they're up here out comes the cyclone out comes the power roll and the damage and the body slam as well they will pick up resolve the explosive cast knocks human man back into the team and the body slam to come out of gragas picks up the second one and i feel like this is starting to become a repeat of the first game we saw of t storm you know once they start to take objectives they really start to group up as you know bot lane jungle and top lane and rotate around where they need to be Obviously we saw them rotate towards mid lane, and now we see them rotating towards top lane after they've taken top lane first. And it seems like it's a really strong plan for these for this team is you know for T Storm to really sit down. And well, actually, hang on, we're in trouble lane. in the mid lane because uh, Willis the man actually is the one that goes down. There was a nice dark binding into the soul shackles, but Vladimir will take pick that one up and Akali finally goes down. She's starting to become a real menace at that four to an O. Yeah, Fort Auto is really going well in Akali's favor. But we are seeing, like, in terms of objectives and in terms of goals, you know, it's going towards T Storm's favor at the moment. You know, they've got three turrets to one, they've got 2.3k gold lead at the moment, uh, and they're only one tool behind. Hang on, Death Sentence could change all that. Doesn't actually find on anyone. That really could have turned that one around. There was almost five members available right there. For the boys yeah. in AGL Inferno, but um, Morgana's coming back down this mid lane, and finally we'll see our first 5v5 fight. Culling is going to come out to try and clear that creep wave. Yeah, I feel like that's. I feel like they do need to buff the culling a little bit in terms of what it does. Unless you can hit every single bullet of the culling onto an enemy target, it's it does nothing. It it's. I, I feel like it does nothing, and it's not as rewarding as it could be. Uh, and it's mainly just used for clearing a wave really well. Uh, we've got a mini bit of an engage in mid lane. No. Oh no. Oh no, Warnox is actually going to go deep. Pops the Gunblade as well on towards Ethereum. So trying to do as much damage as they possibly can. Woo. Lucian picks that one up and now Warnox is in trouble as the Hemoplague times out. Death Sentence does fine on towards Eddie. They dive deep on towards him. Soul Shackles is going to come out here in a second. The Impale actually on towards Willis the Man, but now Storm Lapras has come through here. So is Wook on the Cyclone is doing work for them. And now the focus is actually on towards Skarner and Lucian. Can he get over the wall? He flashes over, but so does Storm Eddie. He wants to pick him up. Can he do it? He gets the barrel roll out. Can he get the body slam? The body slam finally to time out and pick up on towards Lucian. Skarner oh, gets out of there, but now Resolve, Resolve managed to just to turn it back around, comes down. And Skarner is here in the human Human Man as well, flashes over the waters resolve, and now there's the Subjugate, they're trying to pick him up, goes again for Siva, back on towards that Skarner, Skarner's now out of there, one more auto attack, and that will pick it up, on towards Wukong, Resolve is now just trying to click creep out from around Lapras, but Lapras is now in trouble, the double buff's actually sitting on Resolve, guys, with a boomerang blade, but no, Resolve, going huge, picks up two, three kills right there. That was a messy team fight, uh, for T-Storm, and I feel like that was misplayed for what we've seen from them. I feel like they got a bit, uh, you know, a bit closed in on what they would need to achieve and it forced them out of it. Ooh, but Hang on, see. here we go. Akali has respawned. She's going back deep on towards Aetherus. Aetherus. Some damage. Soul Shackles is now going out and Warnox just dashes away, obviously, with that ultimate from Akali. He's going to get out of there and Soul Shackles now on a long cooldown. It wasn't an ult from Akali. It was the Lantern uh, from Thresh. Well, the Lantern is still sitting up there behind. She altered back onto Creep. Was she? Yep. Oh, okay. I could have thought she took the Lantern. My bad. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, no, as anyway. I was saying, uh, I feel like T-Storm misplayed that team fight and really extended it a lot longer than they need to. But we're seeing teams group around uh, for Dragon at the moment, obviously spawning in the next 20 seconds. So... Yes. Poke's gonna come out from Eddie, but uh, Carly still shoving down that mid lane. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Carly's really looking to take that objective, but they're going to have to force her out of this one. Uh, you know, just to take, counter take it. Dark Binding missing a little bit there. Uh, I feel like Resolves with those double buffs has really done work for, the, uh, for AGL at the moment, especially getting that uh, triple kill before.
Mm, that was huge on a tunnel. Tunnel's now going to get very tanky very quickly. And now there's just this wave clear coming out from Lapis is huge, and, and the rest of his team is.